Hello, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, yes, so I'm Stephen Boyd, and I'm here to talk about missing maps. I'm aware everyone has been sitting for a very, very long time, so I'm going to try and do this as quickly as I can. Um, I'd like to start today by doing a bit of history, um, mapping history. So does anybody maybe know who this gentleman in the picture is? If you don't, if you don't, don't worry. Um, it's Roy. It's Roy, no. Um, this is, um, sorry, what was it, Roy? Colby, yes. So this is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Colby. Um, if you're not aware, he was uh, the first he was the person in charge of the Ordnance Survey um, in England. He was then, in 1824, sent across to map Ireland um, for various purposes, taxes, etc., etc. Um, now, Thomas Colby was a perfectionist, so instead of just doing things the uh, bog standard way, he developed um, cutting-edge techniques of how to map Ireland. Um, and Ireland is now was the first country in the world that um, was mapped totally and fully right down to um, a very, very accurate level. Um, and he was a perfectionist because whenever they went back in the 1960s and they did it all electronically, it was only out by an inch um, using the electronic and modern methods. Um, but we're not here to talk about Thomas Colby, we're here to talk about missing maps. So um, unfortunately in the world, um, everywhere isn't as mapped as well as Northern Ireland. Um, in the picture here is it's Kibera in Nairobi, um, which is one of Africa's largest slums. Um, I think it, it ranges between um, 400,000 to a million people live in this area. Um, and if you go and try and find a map of it, um, well, first you probably find it very difficult, and secondly, the one you get will probably show it to you as being like a, as a forest, because um, that's originally what it was. Um, but today, it has developed into, say, into this slum. Um, well, we live in the modern world, we can go to Google, it'll give us a map which we can then use, but obviously, Google just has a few roads, um, and it doesn't have the individual buildings um, mapped out or any of the resources in there, which um, in humanitarian circumstances are, are very, very important and very, very useful to organizations. Um, however, we, had open, we have OpenStreetMap, um, the Wikipedia of maps, um, and in 2009, um, volunteers, with, along with local people, decided to map out Kibera. Um, and they have, they have, st they started, and they continue to do this. And this now has become a, a large-scale sort of community project in that area. Um, and I suppose compared to the previous picture, you can now see obviously there are a lot of people living in Kibera, and there are a lot of services available from toilets, cinemas, um, lots and lots of different things. So. Kibera, I say, is not unique, um, and approximately around the year, each year, there's 100,000 people are affected, uh, or sorry, there's, are k killed by disasters, um, and it usually your 200 million people are displaced, um, and more of these disasters usually occur, there are literally no maps for them, um, which can really affect um, say humanitarian response. Um, so this the picture on the screen um, is, is from OpenStreetMap, and it um, the darker areas are actually the areas in the world where there's no mapping data existing for them. Um, and missing Maps has, was set up in uh, 2014, and it's, a, it's an open and collaborative project, which basically is trying to put um, the missing people, the most vulnerable people in the world, um, onto, onto a map, so that then um, people, and say when disasters strike, that information can be used, it's available, it's already there, and it can be used to assist them. Um, there's two main objectives. I say uh, the first one is to basically map the most developed, the most developing, people, developing uh, places in the world, um, so that it can be used by NGOs. Um, and it also uh, the second objective is to support OpenStreetMap um, and the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team um, in developing technology and skills um, within work and workflows and also local communities. Um, it has three so it's core ethics. Um, firstly, obviously, it is open, um, and OpenStreetMap is used to gather the data, and then it, so obviously, then it can be downloaded and shared free um, with, with whoever needs it. Um, and also, it is it is very much about um, giving and using local people as well um, at, at certain stages of the project, so that they can obviously, uh, whenever the project moves out, can also can maintain and, and keep on um, developing the map. Um, so it was established in 2014 and there were four main founders, um, British and American Red Cross, 
um, Doctors Without Borders and the Humanitarian Street Map Team. Um, three of those organisations you may, are large of the NGOs, um, you may know a bit about. They obviously provide assistance throughout the world. Um, the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team you may not know about. Um, it was sort of, it was created in, in, in 2010 in response to the Haiti earthquake. Um, and it was where, I suppose, groups of, of people just, they started updating OpenStreetMap. Um, and OpenStreetMap became, and then that disaster, the, the primary source of mapping. Um, and after that, they then, say, they came together to form the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, and they have responded to every major emergency um, since then. Um, missing maps gives them a bit of a different focus. It means they can preemptively map areas. So usually they just respond in an emergency situation. But now they are in a position where they can they can help and go in preemptively, so um, it's not all hands to the deck if something um, goes wrong. Um, earlier this year, they say there were also there are nine um, other organisations which came in um, and joined uh, the program. And uh, one of for the Susan Aaron connection is of concern, um, and they became a member um, earlier on. And I will give a focus on, on maybe what they're using the mapping for a bit earlier. So how does Missing Maps work? So there are three main processes, three main stages um, within Missing Maps. Um, stage one is remote mapping. So people go, they go on to log on to their computers. Um, and they first of all, they would create an OpenStreetMap account. And then they would go to this, which is the Tasking Manager. Um, and this is say, the core of, of mapping um, and the tasks involved there. And so they essentially they pick a, you'll see in the picture that there's um, number of squares, so basically you take a geographical area, you put squares on it, um, and this sort of helps breaking down the mapping task into small and easier chunks, which mean it can be mapped pretty rapidly. So volunteers come in, they pick a square, um, and then they go in and they edit, edit it, and they, there's, there's five different types of editors they have, all built using open source technology um, and software. Um, some are web-based, some are desktop-based, and then um, the bottom two there you can take out into the field. Um, and essentially what you see in these editors is um, an aerial picture. Um, and as you then, using the using this, this the editor software, you go along and you basically trace around what is on the ground. Um, buildings, roads, waterways, which whatever the, the organization um, is doing the project is asking for. Usually it's buildings and roads because they, they are usually the most, the most interesting. Um, there's also an app which was launched in June this year called MapSwipe. Um, and this, basically you, it, you get a collection of um, aerial pictures which you swipe through and if you see a building or a road, you tap the screen and it then um, allows people, it gives a quick access or a quick, quick response to know where say, um, communities are um, and it can be very useful in um, epidemics say of measles or other diseases like that if, if organizations don't know where villages are well then they can't obviously go out and, and help maybe immunize or or provide aid um, you can take um, you can download the mapping and do it online take it take it offline um, so if you're on the bus and you need something to do you can have a go with mapping using map swipe um, maybe we're um, Missing maps it differs from other mapping projects, and um, certainly from the early uh, hot humanitarian open street map team projects, is they then go into the field um, and do more um, mapping. Um, so they take the remote mapping that we that has been done um, by satellite, but from looking at a satellite image, you can't really tell what a certain building is. So you know, if we looked at here, we couldn't tell this was part of the university. We could just tell it was a large building. Um, and the same, obviously, in, in, in other parts of the world. So uh, Missing Maps goes into the field. Um, they, they print out the, using field papers uh, an, uh, an application, and they get local people to basically to, to walk around uh, and fill in maybe where uh, water points are or names of roads, um, if there's a school or a hospital. Information that really is, 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 is useful um, and, and critical in, in the humanitarian disaster or when, when relief is required. Um, last year, they the project completed its largest um, so it local mapping um, or field mapping project um, in West Africa. They they went to Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, um, and these were areas that were that had been 
maybe highly affected by the Ebola crisis. Um, and whenever these you know, organizations were responding to Ebola, they found there were huge gaps um, in, in information that they could have used in terms of contact tracing, epidemiology, and, and very things like that. So um, they covered the size of Switzerland, then of course these three, company, these three uh, countries, um, and they added a large number of, uh, of buildings um, and other points to that. Um, so that's last, last, last stage three of the project is, um, is using the mapping then in the field. Um, just a quick example, I say concern where we came on board, and this is City Soleil in, in, in Haiti. Uh, and this is an area that they hope to work in, or they are working in, and they hope to, to use missing maps to develop their work. Uh, City Soleil is one of the uh, poorest areas in, in Haiti, um, and there's approximately 250,000 people live there, and it's all built on reclaimed land. So there are huge issues with um, when it rains, with flooding, um, as along with all uh, a number of other issues. Um, and through this project, they're obviously hoping to try and, um, using missing maps, they're trying to reduce issues with flooding and, and, and all the other uh, issues that affect there. Um, they have completed stage one um, of this, so all this area has been mapped remotely, and now Concern are, um, are developing um, the resources on the ground to actually then go in and add those extra details that, that they would, would really be um, found useful. Um, so, say, Missing Maps has been going since 2014, and as of Wednesday night, there were over 20,000 people had signed up to contribute to the project. Um, all those people together, they have edited OpenStreetMap over 26 million times. And they have added over 5 million buildings, nearly 6 million buildings, and they have added you know, nearly 900,000 kilometers of road. Um, and I think that, personally, I think that is, you know, for so it's a small, pretty small number of people, that is actually a, a large amount of, of, of data that has been, has been added on, on to the map. Um, they, and they've actually, they have surmounted their, their, they've gone past their target that they had set for, um, they wanted to, to, to um, they wanted to capture, add 200 or 20 million people um, within two years. So they have, they have done that um, by, by this. Um, I want to hand over now to Connor, who's going to quickly talk about a couple of events that are yeah, coming up. So just quick, uh, through the GIS team uh, at Queen's, we've decided to set up uh, a missing maps uh, user group or a missing maps chapter. Uh, and the plan is to, to regularly get, get people involved. So if you want to get involved, uh, we're going to be running uh, over the year what are called Mapathon events. We're actually running one you'll see in your uh, timetable uh, at the end of the day, if you want to come along, we'll do a, basically a paper session. Uh, myself and Lorraine uh, will be involved. He's just next door in the innovation suite. Uh, I don't think you're, are you available? Yeah, Stephen won't be here. But So the plan is you want to come and actually uh, contribute, get signed up, uh, get your account going. Uh, and then uh, on the 8th of February, uh, uh, in two weeks' time, basically, we're running a mapathon event uh, in Queens uh, in the geography building. So uh, it's available at the moment online. Uh, if you just go to Facebook and, and search for Missing Maps QUB, uh, you'll get details there of the registration. Uh, again, uh, at the moment, it's registration accounts and stuff to get people, uh, people signed up. But you can get involved, and hopefully we, as a, you know, as a university that has lots of resources and lots of computers, and lots of uh, interest, people who are interested in getting involved in this project can contribute. In the last 24 hours, just quick, uh, we have, have been chatting to getting it hooked up with uh, a Degree Plus under the volunteer theme so that students actually can, when, they, uh, when you submit edits, that's all logged, and your time on the Missing Maps project is logged through your edits, and we can use those then as credits to go towards the volunteering within, within uh, Degree Plus. So even if you're sitting at home or sitting on the bus, looking for villages and adding to the, the uh, project, we can use that basically to get degree plus credits. Thanks very much, Connor. Thank sorry, you. sorry, sorry. Uh, we're already way behind and I'm trying to push people down to get their coffee. Um, just like to say a special thanks to Stephen for coming. He's had bad news recently and he's made a big effort just to be here today. So many thanks.